Hello everybody, Plasma1945 with you. Right now I'm on Enigma's Cold War server and I am going to give you a quick crash course, no pun intended, on getting the F5 up in the air. This video is intended for both watching but also so you can listen to it in the background while you're in VR. So if you have gotten the airplane auto started already, fast forward to a 2 minute and 10 second mark and then pick up from there. Otherwise, what we need to do first, whether you are starting on this server or on another server where there is no hot planes, is you will need to start up the plane. If you are jumping into a hot plane on, say, Growling Sidewinder, a number of these options will still need to be set and you will still need to rearm your plane. I'm going to skip the manual startup procedure and I'm going to cheat and press left Windows Home on the keyboard and that would initiate the auto start of this plane. When the auto start is happening, do not click on any switches, do not toggle anything, leave the plane alone to do its magic. If you bring up any settings or if you click on any switches during the auto start procedure, this may fault and may break your auto start procedure. So make sure that if you are auto starting the plane, and this will take about a minute and a half, two minutes, you do not click on anything and you let it run through its paces. Otherwise, Let's get into the actual startup of the airplane and what needs to be done after the engines and electrical components are running on it. Because until you've done all these steps, your F5 being a full fidelity plane might be able to take off, but it's not going to be much good in a dogfight. Again, keep in mind that you can listen to this in the background while you're in VR, because I'm going to go left to right as I go through each of the important settings and switches that needs to be turned on within the plane. Check for my other video for the important bindings required for the F5. So here we go. All right, now that the auto start sequence is complete, what you want to do is you want to request some weapons and ammunition. You can do this by accessing the communications window, going up to ground crew, and choosing to rearm and refuel. My preferred loadout for missions where I don't need to fly beyond 100 miles is a AIM-9 P5 times 2 and Fuel 275. This is an air-to-air -air configuration and you can choose out your favorite, let's go, Aggressor Snake. Once you've hit OK, wait for a confirmation from ground crew to copy and they can start rearming you. Unlike FC-3 planes, the full fidelity plane such as the F5 can be rearmed with the engines running. So let's allow for the rearming to continue and we're going to look inside the cockpit and start turning on this plane's other functions so that we can start flying and getting into combat. First things first, I'm going to press M to bring down my mirrors just in case to help me out. Then I'm going to look down to the left elbow within the cockpit. So this would be where your pilot's left elbow will be. Let's zoom in on that area there's a number of items here. Our first items are the chaff and flare dispensers. I set these to single so that every time I hit my chaff flare button, a set of chaff and flare is released. Up from that is your radar controls. I change it to standby mode so it starts warming up and I change range to 10 because that's my most common engagement range. I recommend binding the standby and operate functions for radar as well as a 10 and 40 scale setting to a key bind. Radar is set, let's move along to the left front part of the cockpit and we're going to look at a set of switches kind of above the pedal on the left side. And we're going to go left to right. First off, missile volume, you can crank that up. What that will do is that will allow you to hear the sidewinder growling and lock a little bit better. You can turn it down if it's annoying. Next up, you will need to bring up a number of pylons. This will set them to active. For this air-to-air -air configuration, you're going to toggle up the left pylon, the center pylon, and the right wingtip pylon. After those have been toggled, just above the center pylon is a red cover with an arrow. That is your master. Flip that up and flip the switch inside of that to the upper position for guns, missile, and camera. You hear a growling, and that means that your sidewinders are attached and they're active. 
you can look out your uh, canopy to the left and to the right and if you've got a couple of missiles there you are good to go we are now almost done with the left side of the cockpit and there's one more thing to set and that is to pull to uncage your trim roll indicator the manual one so just roll that and it will uncage it the red tab will disappear this is in case all your equipment fails you'll have some sort of information and I want to call out Tenko for helping me remind me that I have to do that all right we are now done with the left side of the cockpit let's look at the center of the cockpit in the center of the cockpit right behind the stick right in the center we're gonna go from bottom to top right behind your flight stick you will see a set of dials and switches and numbers and this is to turn on your radio first thing you'll need to do is you need to set your radio to be on by turning UHF to main after that you can crank up the volume and moving to the set of knobs just above the UHF setting you can now start changing your frequencies you can pull up the frequencies required for your aircraft within either the mission briefing or within the kneeboard by pressing the letter K. In this case, I know that the AWACS is on frequency 257. I can roll the switch to get to 257. And once it's set, I should be able to request a bra call. So let's try that out. I'm going to bring up the comms. I'm going to go AWACS and request bogey dope. There we go. AWAX is responding, which is a good thing. Once you can hear the AWAX talking to you, you are in a good place. If you're flying on a server where there is both the automatic AWAX and a human GCI, you can also set the frequencies up here and within your SRS to talk to a real GCI. Moving right along the center panel, you will see your radar screen. By this point, the radar should have warmed up. You'll have a horizontal stroke through the radar that is the line of the horizon and if it's green that means your radar is on moving up from that along the very top you will see a set of three dials and you want to set the mode to say a slash a1 dash guns what this will do is if you've clicked it successfully and everything else is turned on a HUD pipper will turn on the HUD pipper will work with your built-in radar and it will allow you to track targets and to shoot on them if they are within 10 mile to 5 mile range so it'll try to lock a target and will try to guide your gun position for a successful shot now we're going to move to the right panel and work away from the top down along the very top of the right panel you will see a set of 10 black buttons with white labels as well as two dials audio and dim this is your RWR control. The RWR tells you where the hostiles are coming from by picking up the transmissions from enemy aircraft and their radar. What we want to do is we want to hit power on that and before it's powered up fully, you will not be able to know if someone is tracking you. So make sure that it is powered up before you take off. All right, almost done with the startup. Let's finish up the right panel and get in the air. Look down towards the right pedal and look for the canopy release switch. Do not pull on that, leave that alone but right above it, you will see a number of additional switches. These switches are for controlling your fuel pumps and your fuel dial is actually just above those switches. Because we are using an external fuel tank on our mid pylon center point, you'll want to flip up the external fuel tank up into the active position. If you had additional fuel tanks on your wing pylons, you can flip those up, but in this case, we don't need to do that because we only have one fuel tank underneath our plane in the center position. After flipping up the external fuel tank to up, you'll want to flip up the cross feeds to up as well. What cross feeds will do is they will attempt to balance the fuel flow from both your right and left tank within your aircraft. So the post startup is complete and you are ready for takeoff once you've got your weapons loaded. At this point, you can actually save this position in the video and use it as reference point. We're going to do a quick walkthrough checklist.
Chaff and flares are on. Radar's on standby. Range is 10. Continuing on the left side. Wingtip and center pylons are in the up position. Master arm switch is up and is in gun missile mode. Your pipper is set to A1 guns. Your radar is showing as green. Your radio is in the main position with volume turned up. Your frequencies are set for your AWACS. Your RWR on the center right area of the console is glowing. You can toggle between search and track. Your fuel crossfeed is set to up. Your external fuel is set to up as well. At this point, we are ready for takeoff. All right, everybody, hopefully this was helpful. I will sign off and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you like this format and if it was clear and helpful and concise for those in VR to get their F5 going. Good luck, fly safe, and I'll see you in the air. Plasma1945, signing off. Extra bonus points if you've made it this far. Drop a comment, of course, and uh, subscribe to the channel. But the extra bonus points have to do with the RWR. The RWR on the F5 is different than the RWRs on other NATO planes and even Russian planes. And that is because the RWR by itself will default into track mode. In the top row of RWR control buttons, there is a search button. As you can see, it's currently not glowing, which means that the RWR is only showing things that have locked onto you, which is kind of useful, but it may not give you full awareness of what's going on. If I click on the search button, right away, an E3 will pop up, and that's because there is an AWACS, a friendly AWACS orbiting just above me, and I'm picking up its signals. So whenever you're flying the F5, you have to bind a control that will change between the search and track modes within the plane. The control is called RWR Indicator Control Search Button. Why did you want to do this? Because as you're flying, you may have hostiles tracking you in search mode, or you may have hostiles tracking you in track mode. Unless you manually flip between them, you may not be aware of all the hostiles that are tracking you. So that is one of the key things to bind in the F5. Quick tip about the fuel. Keep an eye on your fuel quantity. It is the bottom row of dials, second from the right, It'll say fuel quantity, it'll have two arrows on it, L and R, that's your left and right tank. This is the fuel inside your plane. The L and R will not move if you've got an external fuel tank connected and if your plane is being fed from the external fuel tank. Once your external fuel is exhausted, the L and R will start swinging from the right side to the left side of the dial as your fuel tank gets empty. Now. If you have forgotten to activate your external fuel tank, and this has happened to me, and you've taken off and you realize that your fuel is coming out of your main tanks and your external fuel tank is just hanging out there, at any point you can turn on your external fuel and it will again resume filling up your internal tanks first. So even if you forgot to turn it on, you can still activate that.